Hello, Chad Moses, physical therapist with UNC Health and Cary Orthopedics. In today's patient education series, we're discussing joint mobilization. This is one of our most used techniques with regards to manual therapy in our daily practice. Joint mobilizations are passive, skilled manual therapy techniques applied to joints and related soft tissues at various speeds and amplitudes using physiological or accessory motions for therapeutic benefits. This technique involves the stabilizing of one segment of a joint and then applying manual pressure or traction to the other segment. The applied force is usually directed in a plane of motion that is very tight or hypomobile in an effort to improve overall joint function. Joint mobilizations have been shown to decrease muscle skeletal pain and restore normal range of motion that might have been compromised by damage, injury, or periods of immobilization. There are two types of motion that can occur at a joint. The physiological range, which is motion that you see, which is voluntary, and accessory range of motion, which is motion that you feel, which is involuntary or passive. It's necessary to have good accessory motion in order to achieve full physiological range. There are four types of accessory motions that can occur at a joint. Rolling, gliding, spinning, and traction. Depending on the patient's tolerance and the overall goals of the treatment, three different types of mobilizations may be used. I'll do a quick demonstration of those three on a lumbar spine. Oscillatory joint mobilizations. This involves applying gentle pressure to the joint that is slow in speed and varies in the size of the movement. This type of mobilization is applied at various points throughout a joint's available range of motion and is graded accordingly to how well the patient can tolerate it. Sustained joint mobilizations. This is a pulling or traction type movement that is held steady for a period of time. This type of mobilization is meant to reduce joint compression and stretch the surrounding tissue. Manipulation. This is a high speed thrusting movement with a low amplitude that is generally applied in the direction of tightness or impaired joint mobility. Joint mobilizations can also increase vascular circulation to and from the joint. This can help with the removal of waste products, help with balance pH levels, and provide a good influx of healthy chemical soup to allow healing and stability of the joint. Early mobilization encourages increased lubrication. A decrease in lubrication can cause increased friction within the joint. Lubrication and flexibility are vital to preventing injuries from occurring and maintaining movement around the joint. Following trauma to muscles, tendons, and ligaments, it is important to encourage movement through them, either passively or actively along the lines of mechanical stress in order to aid in their recovery. Reduce the formation of adhesions and scar tissue that could interfere with normal gliding of the tissues. Joint mobilizations are also effective in relieving tight muscles. Tight muscles can lead to strains that can immobilize a joint. Regarding neurophysiological effects, joint mobilizations can affect mechanoreceptors in the joint which in return will decrease pain and muscle spasm, mimic the pain gate theory, minimize central sensitization, promote descending pathway inhibition, and cause changes in opioid and dopamine production. So just to summarize, the amplitude or the distance of the articulation is just as important as the technique itself. It should be great enough to generate movement, but not so great that it causes pain. As symptoms subside, the amplitude should gradually be increased. In practice, therapists will usually initiate a grade 1 or grade 2 low amplitude oscillatory motions early, then progress to grade 3 or grade 4 higher amplitude mobilization techniques as tissue healing allows. Joint mobilizations may be preceded by heat and are also followed by passive range of motion and stretching. Then ultimately, active range of motion stretches to maintain the newly gained mobility. There are several types of tools that we can use for mobilization besides our hands. Those would be mobilization belts, and sometimes tools from like Graston, or even cupping mechanisms like this patella immobilizer. As always, thanks for watching and enjoy the demonstrations.